Thanks. Uh, so here's an interesting question for you. Uh, Michael is wondering if it's possible to be an effective servant leader under the thumb of oppressive command and control leaders, and if so, how? Well, I, I'm, I'm a large company person. I've grown up in large companies, so is Pat. Um, and they've traditionally been command and control environments, so your only path was to be in that environment. And so I would tell you um, that every small team in a large organization has a chance to demonstrate a better leadership approach and make the organization curious about what you're up to and why it's producing such outstanding results. Um, I'm confident that servant leadership will lead your team to performance that makes others curious. And Cheryl, I love what you said earlier about this, that you're creating a microculture within your organization. I mean, as you said, we've all lived as you become the buffer for your team, almost to the point that you're trying to build a little cocoon around them to say, okay, I understand all the crazy that's going on around me, but here we're going to try to behave differently. And I remember a conversation I had once uh, with a, a leader of mine who said I was just too nice. And I said, well, I didn't know that nice was a problem, but that was not an excuse for not accepting good um, results from my team. So you can be nice, you can bring out the best in people, but you have to, in some cases, really shield them from the, the culture that's around them. Well, and you find uh, some people in eight of the world's uh, religions, which simply says treat others like you'd like to be treated, and it's an amazing and rewarding practice. Um, and if you teach that to your leaders, you will be setting them up to create these small micro cultures that produce superior results as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. That is very helpful. Kevin is wondering how you can motivate employees 